Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. My dad wasn't afraid to die. We talked about it a lot, and he always said that dying is a part of life, and the only thing we can do is to enjoy every day that we get. I think that my dad always knew that something like this was going to happen. I truly believe that if he had to go, this was the only honorable way for it to happen. And even though the pain of missing him will never go away, I know that my mom, my sister, and my family will survive this because we were the luckiest people in the world to have him in our life, a warrior. He showed us what it means to be strong, and his strength will always be with us. Dad, I love you so much. That was a funeral yesterday for a white cop killed by a Hispanic gang member. Sorry to put the race in there, but we're living in incendiary times, and there's a war against white police, triggered by Obama and Holder. They said it's open season on white cops. You don't like what I'm saying? Check everything Obama and Holder did last year. A police sergeant, 10,000 times better than the piece of garbage you shot him. A million times better. A star compared to a piece of garbage was shot at a traffic stop. He pulled his piece of crap over. Mark Estrada at 3 in the morning for driving erratically in his Chevy Silverado. Without warning, the gang member Estrada opened fire, shooting Lunger in the head and killing him. Well, yesterday there was a funeral, a huge funeral at the Oracle Stadium. It was so big people couldn't get in there. And a new low was hit in the media. The San Francisco papers didn't cover the funeral. If you look on the San Francisco website, there's not one mention of this slain police sergeant honored as a warrior. Do you know why? Do you know why they're not covering the funeral? Because it fills people with rage towards the illegal aliens in San Francisco who are roaming the streets with impunity. And they can't have that. It doesn't fit the narrative that they all come here to work. And then, of course, it was a white cop who was shot dead in the streets. Can't have any sympathy for them. The heartbroken daughter's crying at the funeral. Was Boxer at the funeral? Was she looking to do a land deal somewhere? Was Feinstein at the funeral for the slain officer? Or was she looking to do a deal with China? Was Pelosi at the funeral? Or was she looking to push more illegals down our throat? It's a new low, ladies and gentlemen. And it goes exactly to the reason Trump is rising in the polls. He touched a raw nerve when he dared say one word about illegal immigrants. One word. And they went crazy. But I, before I move on to the other topics of the day, I, I would feel that I didn't do my job today if we didn't play the eulogies at the funeral yesterday because there's a lot of news. And the biggest story I have today is something no one has done so far as I know yet in the media, which is we compile a list of conservative voices bashing Donald Trump. We have the names. We have what they said. I'm not surprised when I see Glenn Beck and Charles Krauthammer on the list. I'm not surprised when I see George Will and Karl Rove and Jonah Goldberg on the list. These toadies have long been anti-conservative who are riding the conservative wave. But the fact of the matter is, this story struck me as one you need to hear about. The killing of the police sergeant by an alleged gang member, Aunt Mark Estrada of Oakland, should never be forgotten especially when the funeral had tens of thousands of people in attendance. The streets were lined with passerbys who were crying, and the newspapers didn't cover the funeral. Didn't cover the funeral. So before I leave that story, I want to salute the men in blue 
by playing another soundbite from yesterday's funeral. I couldn't be there, but I picked it up on the radio. Here is Sergeant Lunger's other daughter, Ashton, and what she had to say at the funeral yesterday. Listen. I'm sure you've heard me tell you how pissed off I am at you right now and see me waiting for your response when I ask why. Because this isn't fair. This is pain that you can't put into words because it's just not real. And I'm so angry when I have to realize that it is. Because you were my best friend. And no little girl should ever have to say goodbye to her heroic best friend. And the liberals didn't cover the story. No, they didn't cover the story. Okay, one more. Here's the father of the slain white officer killed by Mr. Estrada, an alleged gang member, probably for a little feather in his cap. Let's hear the father now at the funeral. We talked about my turn for your safety a lot. And you always said, Dad, don't worry. When it's your time to go, you can't do a thing about it. It's in God's hands. Well, your time to go came way too soon. A son is supposed to bury his dad, not the other way around. I want you to know, the whole country knows who you are, Scott. You became the man that every proud father and parent hopes their child will become. Humble, ethical, honest, brave, caring, generous, a leader with integrity, and a great sense of humor. You may have dropped the gauntlet, but with your help and training, you have inspired others to pick up the gauntlet and to carry on in your spirit. You were and you are our guardian angel, my son, Sergeant Scott Paul Lunger. <laughs> oh, just another white cop killed by another gang member. Didn't make it to the papers. Boxer, Feinstein, Pelosi, Sanctuary City people. His death is on your hands. His death is on your hands. I'd like to have a 15 second silence as I compose myself, because I'm liable to say something that I don't want to say. 15 seconds of silence in memory of the slain officer Scott Lunger, killed without memory in the verminous, filthy San Francisco media. 15 seconds from now, go. Okay, I think I got your attention. We're at war. The left has flooded America with an army. Some come here to work, some come here to kill, some come here to work the system, but this country has been invaded. It's been invaded, we've had an invasion, and there's only one man who I think, and I say I think because I don't know, might, just might stop the invasion by building a wall between this country and the third world hellhole called Mexico. You see, if Mexico was such a great nation as we hear, we wouldn't be getting so many citizens of Mexico running here. If El Salvador was such a great paradise, we wouldn't have one-fifth of all the citizens of El Salvador living in the United States of America. No, they come here for a better life. Unfortunately, we're also getting some of the real rotten apples along the way because Obama has stripped the Border Patrol of all authority. The devil in the White House has stripped the Border Patrol of all authority. The devil in the White House has issued 600,000 green cards this year alone without any vetting of who they're giving, being given to, simply to advance the community organizer's desire to destroy the Republican Party. And now let's move on to the Republican Party per se. Rubio says the U.S. has a long and painful history of discrimination and it still affects minorities. That's right, you heard it. That's not Bernie Sanders. That's not the usual leftist demagogues like Hillary Clinton. It's Marco Rubio pulling out the race card. 
Now that he's fallen to where he belongs, which is in the one percenters, and I don't mean the one percent of earners because this guy couldn't make a living if he tried. No, he's fallen to the one percenters in the race for the presidency because that's all he ever was, a zero, who was chosen by the uh, power brokers in the Republican Party because he had an avowal for a last name and he had an Hispanic background. That's how low it's gotten. And yet he said we have a history of racial discrimination. I guess he's felt uh, discriminated against this non-entity. You want to play Rubio? We'll do that later. We have other sound bites today. And I, I really don't want to bum you out, but you know, let me back this up for a minute. Friday is usually a day that talk show hosts copy Rush Limbaugh and do nothing. It's open mic to mic Friday, or it's the day you take over and you run the show, and I'm such a genius, but I let idiots like you do it. Yay! From sunny Florida. It's a good way to sit back in a chair and let you make calls. Such a throwaway day. So people work four days a week instead of five. That's if they work the four. And the fifth day, they let you do the job. I decided the news is so powerful and there's so many important stories that I'm going to double down and work doubly hard on Friday. Now, the audience is smaller on Friday. We all know that. It's summertime. End of July, it's smaller yet. We know that. The ratings books don't really count in the summer. Summer, We know that. But you know what? God has given me the strength and the health to be on this microphone long past the time that I would still be functioning. And I'm going to use every last ounce of strength and health that God gives me to get the message out. Now, some of you think it's futile. Some of you think it doesn't matter. Some of you have given up. Some of you said it's too late. Some of you said the country is over. Some of you said that Obama is so devious and so evil. The Democrats are so entrenched and the Republicans are not much better that there's no hope. I can't, I can't answer that. I'm not God. I don't know what the future uh, you know, holds. I have very dark feelings about what the future holds for this country. And then I have a slight glimmer of hope every once in a while. Now, the perfect campaign for 2016, the ultimate campaign for America, would be Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. At long last, there would be a shootout between socialism and capitalism. Nobody in the media has said that yet. That's because I lead the pack in ideas. You know that and I know that. I don't need the rewards and the awards. I don't need them. I just said something that you'll never forget. I want to shoot out between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. When I say shoot out, of course, I mean a debate and an election. Because as I stand here, I know for a fact that it would be a 70-30 win for Trump, maybe 75-25, maybe 80-20. You see, the socialist liberal bloc in America is minuscule. It is minuscule, and yet they have very loud voices. They run the media. They run the universities. And so you think that there are more of them than there really are. There are not that many sickos who hate America. There are not that many crazy leftists who have any power. Never forget that. And although Hillary talks about the millionaires and billionaires and she's going to raise taxes, have you forgotten already Clinton cash? You forgot the book about the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that were grifted by the library by that sterling example of an American citizen? No, the American people are not that stupid to elect a socialist, especially a thin one like Bernie Sanders, who's no better than the agitators of the 1930s in New York City who stood on soapboxes in parks in the city and bellowed about the wonders of Joseph Stalin. It would be 80-20 because even illegal aliens would vote for Trump. They don't want to throw their money into the dark hole of government. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Look, the country has a history with races. Painful, complicated, and I think its impacts are still felt in many communities across the country. And I think that it's important for us to confront these issues because we can't fulfill our promise as a nation if you have a significant percentage of the population feeling as if the American dream is not is out of reach for them. That's the end of Rubio. He was finished before he began. This guy died at the starting gate. So now Rubio shows his true liberal colors. He says that the U.S. has a painful history of discrimination affecting minorities. Now, why did his family come here? 
from Cuba. How does a non-entity like him become a senator if we have discrimination? How does a complete flop like Rubio run for the presidency if there's discrimination? Doesn't make sense to me. But nothing makes sense that liberals uh, say. Tr uh, Crowdhammer, that miserable thing of a human being on, on Fox News. That miserable, miserable man. A miserable human being. That's why I call him sauerkraut hammer. Why anyone watches and believes a thing that they say. I, he called Trump a rodeo clown. Listen to clip uh, one. This is Mr. Conservative Charles sauerkraut hammer on Fox. Clip and one. the pity is this. This is the strongest field of Republican candidates in 35 years. You could pick a dozen of them at random and have the strongest cabinet America's had in our lifetime. And instead, all our time is spent discussing this rodeo clown. You're just jealous. Charlie, you're just jealous. You're jealous of anyone who's superior to you in any way. And you, you know something? Your jealousy seethes out of your face. He goes on saying that uh, Krauthammer says that Trump is hurting the brand. You schmuck you. A brand? What do you, what, do you have a toothpaste here? Or a party that's supposed to represent the American people? Listen to this idiot Krauthammer on Trump and two. You know, uh, um, Jeb Bush and uh, Marco Rubio and the others have not needed Trump to raise the issue of immigration, particularly in this way, is definitely hurting the brand and distracting the entire debate. The hurting the brand. Now you know who Charles Krauthammer has always been. Now, Rove, I've never been a fan of. I've always been disgusted by him. He always turned my stomach. Not just because he looks like a central casting for an SA officer. If I were doing a World War II movie, let's say Hogan's Heroes, he would play one of those who ran the camp. You know, a jocular, friendly one. Not just for that reason that I somehow my mind slips. It's because he is a establishment Republican type who puts the party above the people, puts the party above the nation, who puts the party above the best interests of the nation. We'll play Roe, Jeb Bush, Perry. You got it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. You were my best friend, and no little girl should ever have to say goodbye to her heroic best friend. You know, I'm shocked at one thing. I'm shocked that the local papers can get away with a thing like this by not covering the funeral. But you know what's even more shocking? Here I am playing some of the most heart-wrenching sound you've ever heard in your life, and not one police officer from the Bay Area has called the show to say that they were at the funeral. Thank you for running it. Thank you for honoring Scott Lung Lunger. Thank you for noting that the liberal media doesn't cover uh, when we get killed. I can't believe this. Well, I would run it anyway, because I do support the police, unlike some in the media who pretend they do but really don't. So let's go on with the callers. The phone number is 855 is the phone number. On the national Savage Nation, conservative voices who have bashed Donald Trump. Glenn Beck. Now, he fled the country. He fled the country after he saw that he bet on the wrong horse and that Trump was rising. Glenn Beck has been a fraud from day one. Glenn Beck has been a faker from day one. Glenn Beck has been a... Uh, I, I call him anything you want. Glenn Beck is, a, is the Margot of the media. He's along the lines of those old revivalists in a church tent who would go town to town and talk about Jesus and get uh, shake money out of the hands of little old ladies from the trailer parks. And so that's what he is. He attacked Donald Trump, calling him a progressive, not a conservative. Charles Krauthammer, we know what he is. A jealous man. A jealous, bitter man called Donald Trump a rodeo clown. George Will is irrelevant. George Will hasn't been relevant since 1986. George Will continues to try to be relevant. But George Will also jumped on him on July 5th on Fox News. Karl Rove, a party apparatchik. So what do you expect? Jonah Goldberg, his claim to fame is his mother's a book agent. So what do you expect? Linda Chavez attack Donald Trump. What do you expect? 
Kevin Williamson, National Review, never heard of him. But he attacked him. Fox News, Eliana Johnson, don't know who she is. Chris Wallace, Fox News, he's Meatloaf's Meatloaf Jr. So what do you expect from Chris Wallace? Chris Wallace has always been Meatloaf Jr. So he attacked Trump. Uh, Mona Charon, I don't know who she is. National Review. Seems the whole National Review clan of crypto Stalinists attack are attacking Trump. Why is the crypto Stalinist National Review attacking Trump? Mona Charon, I don't remember who she is. I think she was famous once in 1987 for some reason. And she said, why can't we get more oafish egomaniac maniacs into politics? Amazing. And you, you still read the National Review? Wow. I'm not going to tell you. Now, let's see. National Review, Kevin Williamson, whoever he is, said, witless ape rides escalator. Called him the worst taste since Caligula. I don't know who Kevin Williamson is. I'm not, I'm, I'm not making that up. I never heard of him. But I know he writes for a very important magazine called the National Review, which is subscribed to about, about 1,200 people. National Review, Kevin Williamson, 15 Elephants and a Clown. This is a conservative magazine? I mean, you've come a long way, baby, from William F. Buckley Jr. My f God, have you fallen. <laughs> okay, so we've covered that. We've covered Rubio saying America's racist. We have the white policeman killed by a Hispanic gang member, not covered by anyone in the media. Did Fox News cover that story? I don't know. I don't know if they'd want to run it. I think there's a hands-off policy from, from, uh, from uh, Murdoch. You can never show um, a story like that. I think Murdoch, Murdoch's children run it now, and they're both very, very liberal. We know that. Here's a little story you may have missed, by the way. Are you, is anyone listening to me? Play La Bamba. I, I get a feeling that people, they got so sad from the, from the funeral, they turned the show off. But I got to go with my emotions and my instincts, or I'm dead in the water. I got to go with what I think is important to me, and then it'll be important to you. Otherwise, I'm not going to do radio. That's all. And that was ripped off by uh, the writers for uh, Ray Donovan two weeks ago. The uh, series caption was, not a sailor, a captain. It was interesting. See, where ideas come from. I'm an expert on where ideas come since I generate most of them in the media. Here's a little story that you may have missed because it didn't make it to your local liberal rag. Police kill more whites than blacks, but minority deaths generate more outrage. This was a little known story I found with the data to back it up by Valerie Richardson, God bless her, of the Washington Times. The headline, police kill more whites than blacks, but minority deaths generate more outrage. That's since the demagogue came to power. That's since the police hater came to power. That's since the uh, America hater came to power. The uh, outrage has begun. Because this is how the hater got into office. This is how the most evil man in American presidential history became president, strictly based on hate. But he's so good at it, you don't know he's hating. I've never seen a master like him. Look, as someone in the business... The talking business, I got to take my hat off to Obama. This guy can spew hatred and make it look like he's blowing bubbles. He gets up there and spews hatred. It looks like he's blowing soap bubbles. He is a master. I think people will study this man for hundreds of years to come to see how such an overt hater could get so far so fast and do so much damage to a great nation in such a limited amount of time. That's all. And now we go to another, I'm going to give you all the stories that I pulled. I have too many to deal with. Today is a day I can feel myself warming up now. I'm into the show 40 minutes. I could do four hours today because the world is melting in front of my eyes. Melting. And it doesn't matter whether it's a Friday and the end of July. It doesn't matter whether the audience is large or big. I have one theory in radio. You want to hear it? I've expressed it several times. I'll put it out again only because that's the, the kind of show I do. I talk about the news, then I talk about ideas, then I talk about me, then I talk about the dog, then I talk about the bay, then I talk about cars, then I talk about whatever. It's called a talk show. I'm not running for office. I don't have to have a crisp white shirt on with a tie to impress you. Don't confuse me with Krauthammer or Rubio, please. Anyway, I have a theory about radio. 
Many years ago in San Francisco, a new Chinese restaurant opened up. Everything with me is food. It all begins and ends with food. That's the way life is. You know, a person could go without air for how long? How long could you go without air? Three minutes. How long can you go without water? Three days. How long can you go without food? 21 days, three weeks. Did you know that's 333? Three, three, three? This is a rough estimate. There are those who more or less. You can go without air for three minutes, go without water for three days, you can go without food for three weeks. Did you know that? So to me, food is very important. Many years ago, one of my favorite Chinese restaurants opened their doors. The first few days, there was almost no one in there. I tried it because I'll, I'll go try a new restaurant that looks good. It was a Hunan Chinese. I don't go there anymore. It's gone way downhill out in the avenues. And it was run by Burmese Chinese. They're wonderful people, and they really know food. They pick the best. Anyway, you go in there, that huge menu. I mean, that's one thing I love about good Chinese restaurants is the diversity of the menus. Phenomenal. Awesome. A hundred items, let's say. Literally every item was available on the opening day in the opening week, even though no one was in the restaurant to speak of. So think about the wastage that it throw food out. It's not, not like you picked an obscure thing like a squid eyes or something, and the guy said, I'm sorry, we don't have it. You know, try the fried rice. He didn't say that. Whatever you picked was there. So what am I getting at? That's like radio. You have to, when you open the doors to your show in radio like I do, you got to be ready for business if the audience is 100% or 10%. You got to have a full menu available for the audience. That's how I look at it. So I hope you're enjoying the cuisine today because the menu is pretty rich with stories, and most of them are pretty horrible. I, I admit it. We're living in very sad, depressing times. We're living in a time when the government has turned on the people. We're living in a time when the government has turned on the unborn. We're giving a t living in a time when the government media complex has turned on everything good and uh, exalts everything evil. And it's not an easy time for strong people. It's a time that makes strong people ask themselves if they can take it anymore. That's the kind of time we're living in. Don't think I don't know it. I have a thermometer into the heart of America. I have a th Believe me, I know what's going on. I, do, I know exactly what's going on. So here's where we are. And the hatred of Trump is amazing because it's showing you who people really are in the media. Forget about the haters on the left. They're given. They're given. Anyone who attacks the status quo to them is a, is a threat. You know, I put up with it for 21 years, so it's nothing new to me. It's like rolls off me like a, a duck to a duck in water. But when you see the faker Krauthammer calling Trump a rodeo clown, when you see the apparatchik rove, you know. Now, Jeb Bush was what you'd expect him to be. We need another Bush like we need a, I don't have a good analogy. I No, I have a good analogy. We need another, we need another Bush in the presidency the way we need another Bush in the presidency. That's about as close as I come to tell you how much we need another Bush in the office of the presidency. They didn't have enough with two, with two terms? Not enough two of them? We need three? We need a third term now? How about the Clintons? We didn't have enough of them? You, what more do you need to know about the Clintons than you learned in the first eight years? What do you expect to happen? Does a leopard change her spots? Okay, so Perry attacked them, obviously, because Perry's in the 1% batch. Pataki attacked Trump because he's a nobody. No one even knows who he is. Romney attacked Trump because Romney's a loser. Christie attacked Trump because he couldn't lose enough weight to run for office. And then finally, we have Dana Perino, who I kind of liked over the years. I thought she was smart. I think she used to work for the Bush. She worked for the burning Bush. And yet she attacked Trump on, on a show on Fox News. Let's hear a bit of it, Clip 10. I don't know if I'm going to waste much time on her. Let's Do you think that you can make Cousins. Mexico pay for a permanent uh, wall here's, here's between Mexico and the United here's States? The thing, that, you could do that. I think that Donald Trump. Yeah, I think there's How? no question. You can build a wall. You and they're going to and you're going to build a wall, and you're going to make Mexico pay for it. I'm not the On president. what I, planet not the could president. that actually happen? Well, I think you could happen. Turn it off. A voice like that. Shut up. Shut, voice like that. Divorce the next second. If I don't listen to a shrike like that, I got a migraine. My right eye went out. Divorce the next second. I've listened to that for 30 seconds. I go right to the, to the phone. I call a divorce lawyer. So she worked for Bush. Okay, I understand. So we ran through those. That's all. Next, we'll move on. Let's see what else I have in the kitty. We have good stuff today. Now, here's a good one. 
this is a good one. A really good one. Bernie Sanders, as I say, is a, a left-wing fanatic. He got very far espousing communism his whole life. And then he moved to Vermont and pulled the wool over the eyes of all the other New Yorkers who moved to Vermont to chase out the people from Vermont. Because Vermont is not Vermont. I mean, you think maple syrup, you know, Rock Rib Republicans, they were flooded by New Yorkers from the Upper West Side. The commies who ran out 25 years ago because the uh, city, they destroyed the city. They wrecked the city with homelessness and crime. And they ran out of the city to find a more pristine life, life in Vermont. It was mainly college professors who had tenure in New York City uh, who moved to Vermont to, to be there on the weekends in order to get away from the very things they just, that they created in New York City. They're cursing themselves that they gave up their apartments now, but that's irrelevant. So, so Bernie Sanders goes there, becomes a senator. Now, suddenly thinks he's a genius, and he's running for the presidency. And as I say, the best campaign in the world would be the shootout. It would be high noon. Bernie Sanders commie versus Donald Trump capitalist. 85-15 Trump. I'm Jimmy the Greek right now. 85-15 Trump in an actual election. I don't care if they flooded America with Mexico. Trump would, would win 85-15. If Mexico voted, Trump would win. Because the Mexican people like a winner. And they can look at Bernie Sanders and say, are you kidding? I'm going to vote for this communist? I'm trying to get away from them out here in, 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 down here in Mexico. Well, I need another one there. Especially one who sounds like he... Well, let's not go there. It's a family show. But... uh no, America's not ready for socialism. The last two elections showed you that. Obama's disastrous policies have shown us that. Forget the polls. Forget what the uh, establishment tells you. The country has not moved to the left at all. It's center-right, especially fiscally. Let's forget gays already for 10 seconds. For one minute, put aside your sexual orientation. For one second, forget sex for two seconds. The country is fiscally conservative. Trump 85, Communist Sanders 15. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Thus far, I'm, I'm all in for Trump. I have been from the beginning. I don't mince words. Till otherwise, I find something I don't like, I won't be for Trump. Because A, he can win, and B, I'm getting 80% on the dollar from him, from conservative values. I know personally he loves the military, and he loves America. That's good enough for me right now, compared to what else we got running there. The first debate is next Thursday. It's a Fox News or moderators, including Martha Washington. She'll be draped in an American flag. Uh, Chris Wallace, uh, Meatloaf Jr., who I don't trust. He's too weaselly. And then the one I do like is Brett Baer, a real journalist. This guy's great. He's the only one I trust. Now, here's the punchline. Are you ready? Hold on to your desks. Take a guess who is sponsoring the Fox News debate next week in which Trump will be there and the other 73 candidates. Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. That's all. I rest my case. So it's now Facebook plus Murdoch versus the Republican Party. I can't wait to hear the setup question. So, Mr. Trump, do you think all Mexicans are rapists or only a few of them? That'll be, that, that'll be Meat Love Jr. Martha will play it smarter. She'll play it down the middle, but still stick a knife in his heart. Well, mark my words, you'll see what marching orders they've been given by Rupert's children, Rupert Jr. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Friday edition of The Savage Nation. 
Where shall I begin hour two? All right, let's start with this. Another illegal alien, Jesus Deniz, also known as Jesus Deniz Mendoza, killed a Good Samaritan family on an Indian reservation that stopped to help him after his car broke down. Stranded motorist killed Good Samaritans for laughing at him. Take a look at the doll. We have a picture of him on uh, the 18-year-old Jesus Deniz on michaelsavage.com. Nice-looking fella. Just the kind of guy you'd stop to try to help. Well, these people were good Christian Indians. They stopped to help him. So he shot Jason. Shane and the, killed him. The wife killed her. And as their daughter, 26-year-old Jura, ran away, he shot her in the back. That's all. Murder warrant for Jesus Deniz. Shot three people with a 22 caliber rifle and then drove away in their car. He shot the victims because he was getting tired of waiting around and because he thought the daughter laughed at him. That's all. Well, it's a cultural thing. I mean, if you feel sensitive to someone's insults, you have to shoot them in the back, kill their parents. You know, pride cometh before all. Now, here's another little story that I try to cover. No one called on it. Local policeman, a hero, member of the tax squad, anti-gang unit, all around American hero, all around American hero, shot in cold blood by Mr. Estrada, 21 years old, gang member, alleged gang member. Scott Lunger, big funeral yesterday, thousands and thousands of people at the Oracle Stadium, overflowing in the stadium. The freeway overpasses were lined with people of all races, by the way, paying last respects to Officer Lunger, not covered in the newspaper. Not covered in the newspaper at all. Killed by Mr. Estrada for no reason. Pulled him over for, a, uh, for erratic driving. And this wonderful man, Mr. Mark Estrada, 21, comes out and shoots him in the head. And that's it. What more can you say about it? The daughters gave a eulogy to rip your heart out. I, I don't think I can play it again. I had to stop talking in the last hour. If you listen to the, to the officer's daughters at the casket and the father, it's beyond belief. U.S. Rep. Eric Swalwell of Dublin was there, but lacking surprising enough was Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, and Nancy Pelosi, the ladies behind the sanctuary city. Not there was any Tusum Newsom, the mayor who gave us sanctuary city. Didn't go to the funeral. He was too busy plotting his, uh, his next political move. Not there was Governor Brown. He was busy. I think he's still in the Vatican talking about global warming. I, I'm not sure if he's come back from his Italian vacation. He wasn't there. The little people were there. People in law enforcement, family, friends, a few local congressmen. Alameda County Sheriff's deputies and California Highway Patrol officers patrol the streets of Hayward. Ugh to allow Lunger's colleagues to grieve. I don't know. I don't know what makes a man put on the uniform every day, how they can take it. I don't know how they can take the hatred that they get because of Obama and Holder and the vermin in the media. I don't know. They're better men than me. Although you can ask me how I take it. 21 years of putting up with the hatred. I've given up a lot for this job. You don't know it. You think that I'm riding high. In one way, I am, but I got to tell you something. I am a social outcast because of my politics in the Bay Area. You don't know that. You don't know what it is to be a pariah when you speak your mind. I'm immune to it because it started the first year I did radio. I found out what was happening. And I figured, look, if anyone doesn't like me, I don't need to know them. And that was the end of that. So, But you wind up, to live, you wind up living basically on your own, in your own thoughts with very few people around you. And then you get used to it and you really don't want anyone around you. It's not like you go to a golf club afterwards and talk to fellow um, like-minded individuals. Let's put it that way. So let's begin this hour with those uh, topics, 855. And I also did a, uh, an analysis of all of the fake conservatives who attacked Trump over the last few weeks and now eating their words and are trying to cover up that they attacked Trump. And I read you the list. Glenn Beck, you'd expect that from him. That's all. He's made hundreds of millions of dollars off his snake charming act. If you think I'm jealous, you're wrong. I, I have enough money, I don't need any more money. So don't think I'm jealous of Glenn Beck. I just, I, I can't believe you people are that gullible. Crowdhammer, what'd you expect from a liberal? Uh, a hateful, mean, a mean, there's a word from Sabicina. A Sabicina, hateful man. Hateful. Boy, he fits right in at Fox News. 
He's sort of a counterpoint to the smiling women, the leg crossers, I call them. Not because I have anything against them. I'm, but you know that you know how Fox News got where they are. They're very good compared to what we have. But they're moving far to the left now because uh, uh, Murdoch Jr. took over. The two juniors took over. So they're in favor of illegal immigration. That you know. So they hate Trump because he's not in favor of illegal immigration. That's all. That's, that's an important story. And let's see what else. I, Rubio attacked America, saying the United States has a long, painful history of discrimination against minorities. That's so absurd coming from him. Now, what did his family flee Cuba for? To have hatred? They came here for discrimination? I mean, in Cuba, they were all like them. All the people were the same type of people. Same racially, basically, more or less. Same language, same culture, for sure. There was no discrimination in Cuba? No, they came here because they came for discrimination. What a schmendrick he always was. But, you know, he was never anything. He was always a zero. Government zero, that's the book. Conservative voices bashing Trump I covered. Beck, Krauthammer, George Will. George Will was heard from last in 1986. He was looking for uh, Al Capone's vault with uh, G Jerry Garcia. <laughs> I don't know his name. Donald Trump. What's the guy on Fox News with the mustache? Isn't his name Jerry Garcia? Uh, Jerry Rivera. Sorry, sir. Carl Rove attacked Trump. What you'd expect from a, a party guy. Jonah Goldberg. Uh, he re a couple of good columns along the way. But if his mother had not been a book agent, he'd be uh, probably cutting corned beef at Katz's on Ludlow Street in Manhattan. Linda Chavez, I don't know who she is. I remember her. I think I've heard of her. I remember hearing of her. I think she was big in the Republican Party around when Reagan was still alive. I don't remember. Then someone named Kevin Williamson, never heard of him. Elena Johnson, never heard of her. Chris Wallace, Meatloaf Jr. Why do I call Chris? And let me clear that up because people don't know where I get the moniker from. First of all, Chris Wallace, whatever you think of him, it's got a, a sneaky look to him. He has a sort of a sneaky look. I don't like his look. I like Brett Baer. Don't get me wrong. I like him. I'll tell you who I like. I trust Brett Baer. He's a real journalist. Chris Wallace is the son of Meatloaf. Why do I call him Meatloaf Jr.? It's a, it's a lightweight attack, but you may as well hear it. And it's this. His father, Mike Wallace. Remember him? Very, very interesting mainstream journalist, I think, on 60 Minutes. He had a rough edge to him, but whatever. Forget his politics. In his last years of life, God rest his soul, wherever he may be, there was a story about Mike Wallace losing his temper once. He had his driver in a town car after work, stopped for a dinner to take out a, 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 a cotton, a cotton job at home. Like me, he didn't want to eat in a restaurant and put up with people. He'd rather go home and watch television in his underwear, I would guess. So for some reason, he came out, the driver came out with the meatloaf in a, in a takeout box. <laughs> And the cop was writing up a ticket. So Mike Wallace allegedly lost his temper. Like, do you know who I am? And screamed at him. I'm an important media figure. And he threw the meatloaf in the box. I don't think at the cop, but it wound up on the <laughs> sidewalk. So, so I called him Meatloaf because of that. So the son, I call Meatloaf Jr., Chris Wallace. And I say the meatloaf doesn't fall far from the tree. It doesn't really work. But you know what I'm saying? My references are... are are easy to remember if you know the background. <laughs> the background. Okay, you're listening to Michael Savage. And many of you don't know what you're listening to. You think that, what is this? Is this radio? Who is this guy? How does he talk like that? What is he even saying? Wait a minute, I like what he's saying. I think I like what he's saying. I almost like what he's saying. I don't know what he's saying. I think I, I agree with him. I'm not sure. He speaks in a funny way. Who is this guy? Well, I'm not Superman. I've been in the radio business 21 years, I guess I have to tell you. The show is heard on about 260 stations, including the biggest on the East Coast, in drive time. Drive time, drive time, drive time, afternoon drive. On the West Coast, it's in like a, a burial hour, noon to three. But that's so we can accommodate the East Coast. People say, why are you on in those bad hours on the East Coast, on the West Coast? I don't know, that's so bad. You're listening somehow. The ratings are good. Anyway, here we are. What a world we live in, my God. Slain Hayward, police officer Scott Lunga, honored as a warrior. Unbelievable. Not covered by the newspaper. Boxer, Feinstein, Pelosi were not there. Governor Brown was not there. What a disgrace they are. How come the cops put up with this? Well, what choice did they have? 
you think that everyone goes in it for the pension. Well, and yeah, they want the pension. Of course they want a pension. Of course they want a pension. But you want you don't want to accept that there are many people who put that uniform on in the bulletproof vest every day because they actually believe in what they're doing. Again, you've joined the haters because Obama has made you think all police are bad. This uh, most hateful anti-police administration in history has done this to America. John, on the local station that I'm on, KSFO in San Francisco, go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, you were said you were curious as to why you hadn't heard from any policemen. And, uh, you know, I was a policeman in Oakland from 1969 to 79, and you could pretty much speak your piece. But today, you have... Uh, Hispanic Officers Associations, Black Officers Associations, Federal Monitors and PDs. So if some guy calls up and he starts making some comments that somebody can could construe to be uh, politically incorrect or racist, he could very well have problems when he goes into... Oh, so it's like, it's like Nazi Germany when the children reported on their parents under Obama. I get it. Yeah. In other words, it's everyone reporting on the white man under Obama. So it's become like Nazi Germany. If you're not a good member, loyal member of the party, the Nazi party, you get reported. Is that it? Yeah, and you don't even have to have any, uh, any malice no. in your mind. Or no, 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 no. All you got to do is say, I don't agree with the party, or I don't agree with uh, the chancellor's policies. And the, the, uh, SS, the, um, the Gestapo came and knocked on your door. Now the Gestapo consists of mean-faced, clipped-haired women in special services who investigate you for uh, inconsistent speech using uh, uh, anti, uh, I don't know, something. Yeah, I get it. No, I didn't think of that. You have a step ahead of me. That's all. You know, it's Friday. I don't think people want to hear all of this negativity. So I'll give you a little bit more of it. Because that's all there is. The world is horrible. The, the nightmare that this country has become under this monster in the White House has to be told. Somebody has to tell the story. You say, well, why are you doing it? You're not making it any better. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. That's why the fake Republican candidates are flopping on themselves, not knowing what to do, because finally there's a candidate who speaks his mind. At least with him, I get 80, 85% of what I want. I don't know his policies on every issue. It was funny, during my interview with Donald Trump this week, I said something that nobody picked up on in the media. They picked up on their big punchline, which is I called Donald Trump the Winston Churchill of our time. Of course, they left out the context. I understand that. They're in the business of selling, uh, selling columns. I get it. But I said something else, and he answered me. Does anyone know what I said? There? I'll tell you what, I'll give a contest now. If anyone listening knows when I said to Trump, if you become president, I want to become the head of blank, and what Donald Trump said. Does anyone know what I said? And what he said, anyone who knows that and gets on the air, only one caller, uh, uh, Jim, will f win a free copy of not my forthcoming book, Government Zero, because it's not ready yet. It's not sold yet. We only shot the picture for the cover last weekend. Thank God that's over. Oh, am I not made for, for cameras? I have a face for, for radio. Not Anyway, uh, a free copy of one of my books. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, I think we have a winner, a very, very uh, careful listener, Darren on WG Day. GDG Radio, that's quite a number of initials there. Darren, welcome to the show. I asked, what did I ask Donald Trump semi-seriously? I said, if you're president, I'd like you to point me the head of, what did I say? Department, uh, the Institute of Health. The NIH. NIH. And, and, you know what, and what did Donald Trump say? And he said, yes, I would need somebody very, uh, very well-knowledged and versed in that position. Yes, he said, I'd have someone very intelligent in that position. Now, of course, the media can run with it if they want. If I ever took over the NIH, do you know what I would do in the world of science and medicine in this country? Do you have any idea how I would revolutionize science in this country? Do you have any idea how I would drive the pharmaceutical industry out of science? Do you have any idea how I would drive the grifters out of the laboratories? The first thing I would do is fire the head of the NIH right now and investigate any potential conflicts of interest going back 10 years. I'd get rid of all the old dead wood. I'd bring in all young scientists. 
Well, there's a time for another show. By the way, going back to the Native Americans who were killed by the illegal alien, we have a little news on that one. And if you don't know the story, man killed Montana Good Samaritans because daughter laughed at him. Oh, yeah, Denise Mendoza, a.k.a. Jesus Denise, 18 years old, executed a Native American couple who stopped to help him on a Montana roadside. He was there, and he said he ran out of gas. So he killed the mother and father. The daughter ran away. He tried to kill her, too. Now, let's look at his immigration record, and let's look at the federal government. Denise, who was out on bond after being arrested last month for burglary in Wyoming, was nabbed 120 miles away in Wyoming. Blah, blah, blah. A Department of Homeland and Security official said Denise was legally admitted into the U.S. on May 31, 2013. ICE was aware of the burglary charge. Listen to this but cannot deport Denise and Lester until he's convicted of a crime. We committed a crime. He was out in a burglary. Oh, I see. He wasn't convicted. So ICE let him run wild in the streets, and he wasted in a Native American family. Another death at the hands of another illegal alien. Yeah, I know. They all come here to work. They all come here to work. There were no dangerous people here on the run from their own homeland. They all come here to work. Yeah, only Donald Trump knows it, huh? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. It is the Savage Nation. So now a Crow Indian family was wasted by a Mexican illegal alien in Montana. They were coming from a Native American service on a reservation. They stopped to help the poor innocent 18-year-old who said he ran out of gas. And when they got out of the car, he told them to start to run. He shot them. And they told the daughter to, in their native language to run. So the, the animal didn't know what they were saying. So the animal shot the father, then the mother, and took shots at the daughter as she was running away. The daughter doesn't know her parents are dead. They won't let the TV on in the, in the hospital room. So the federal government now has another death, two deaths on their hands. He had been arrested for burglary. They let him out. They wouldn't deport him. So Obama has two more on his notch, two more notches. You got Katie here in, uh, in San Francisco. We, we can give you a whole list if you want. They stopped to someone in need because they were good people. Side of a road, the man was stranded. Jesus Denise of Wyoming. He's not of Wyoming. Of, I love when they say of Wyoming. You know, he's of Wyoming, yeah. He was admitted by the federal government. He's as much from Wyoming as I am from Wyoming. So they stopped to help him. That's all. Pulled out a twenty two rifle and ordered them to hand over money in their car. The Shanes, members of the Crow Indian tribe, said they had only change. When he told them to start walking, Taina Shane told her daughter in their native Crow language to run, and she did. Gunshots rang out. Mother and father were killed by the illegal alien from Mexico. And their daughter was grazed in the back by a bullet. He kept firing. She has a gunshot wound in her back. They arrested Mr. Denise. I love Mr. Denise. Don't you love the New York Times? Mr. Denise. Donald Trump, they don't call Mr. Trump. But him they call Mr. Denise. Driving 112 miles away. Another two notches on the federal government's list. Now let's move to the commie who wants to be president. He'd be laughable if he wouldn't, wasn't laughable. The only reason I like Bernie Sanders is because I hope he undermines Hillary Clinton. Because he's actually expressing what she is. Bernie Sanders is Hillary Clinton in a pair of dirty pants. So here's Bernie Sanders. He goes before a group of Hispanic lobbyists. I forget the name of their pressure group who want open borders. They want every Mexican, Guatemalan, El Salvadoran, Honduran, Nicaraguan to walk into America. They want no borders. And he speaks to them about open borders. And he says, no, I wouldn't open the borders. And they're shocked. Well, wait a minute, but you're a socialist. Bernie Sanders is against open borders. I want you to listen to us. This is fabulous. This is where the rubber meets the road. Here's Bernie Sanders shocking even Michael Savage in, in a, a shard of sense came out of his mouth in 14. Should we have a completely open border so that anybody can come into the United States of America? If that were to happen, which I strongly disagree with, there is no question in my mind that that would substantially lower wages in this country. When you have 36% of Hispanic kids in this country who can't find jobs, and you bring a lot of unskilled workers into this country, what do you think happens to that 36% of kids who are today unemployed? 51% of African-American kids. 
I don't think there's any candidate for president, none, who thinks that we should open up the borders. So even the commie, Bernie Sanders, I, I can't believe it. I don't know how even, you could see why he's popular. A, he has an impossible accent that's comedic. He makes me sound like I'm speaking the King's English. That's number one. His accent is so heavy and so New York 1930s that he makes me sound like I'm Prince Charles's cousin. That I was born in Shropshire. I grew up grouse hunting and fox hunting, which I didn't. But nevertheless, Bernie Sanders is against open borders. So the Hispanic lobbyists were shocked. What do you mean, no open borders? You're one of us. We love you because you're to the left of, of Hillary Clinton. No, no, I'm not going to open borders. We're going to open. Now here's a better soundbite. I've been waiting for this one. Obama appoints a lunatic, I mean a raving maniac, Ann Ravel, to the Federal Election Commission. And she says that super PACs only help white men. That's number one. She's a white woman. And then she says they should fire everyone on the FEC except her. I swear to God, if you watch the speech, which I did, I said this woman is a, uh, I, I can't say a mental case. That would be too mild. If you look at her and you listen to what she says, I'll put it another way. She's a perfect match for Obama. Another psychotic in high places. Another psychotic in a high place who is such a raving narcissist that she doesn't even know what she sounds like. Here is the FEC chair, Ann Ravello, says super PACs only help white men in clip 16. Over 90% of super PACs are funded by white males. And they Ooh. generally have been found to contribute to white males. Ooh. So with the outsized influence of super PACs, the okay, barrier you got the picture. to entry. A white, woman, white woman concerned only about how bad white males are. Another phenomen phenomenal, crazy, self-hating woman. And using, by the way, race, when she's white, never forget she's a white woman, using race to get ahead like Obama did. You know, there's no different. And lack of representation again. Okay, you get the picture. I don't have to spell it out for you. 855-407-282, phone number, michaelsavage.com. Rubio says that America's uh, racist. Boxer says the sale of baby body parts can help cure diseases. Okay, I'll, I'll remind again, Barbara Boxer, you go into the eternal hall of shame. I always knew you were a bad woman. I always knew you were evil through and through. I knew it. But I won't go into it. You have now hit a new low because Hitler began his extermination policies by, ex, by um, killing the handicapped. And he said that he was, he was uh, um, exterminating the handicapped for their own good because they'd be in pain their whole life. And the Germans said, oh, well, it's kind of reasonable. I don't like killing handicapped people. But, you know, well, maybe the Fuhrer is right. You know, the Chancellor of, he could be right. You know, they suffer. Those, look how they look with the pointy heads and Down syndrome. You know, it's probably better that we let them kill them. You know, because it's, it's humane. So now Boxer says the same thing about embryos. You got to listen to clip 21. Here's Barbara Boxer getting the Goebbels Award on the, on the Savage Nation. We're not going to allow Republicans to undermine the vital research that is helping treatments for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, HIV, and birth defects. There's no word for her. It's despicable. There's no other word. I don't have a word for her. So Planned Parenthood is selling baby body parts to help for the fight diseases? Sure. Oh, sure. Even the Nazis didn't sell body parts. This is lower than the Nazis in this regard. Oi, how dare you use the Holocaust in that way? I'm going to hear from Abe Foxman now. That I did. I'm not around. Even mention the, the Hitler or Hulk. I got to go through central, the central office of the ADL, even to mention it. What do you say, huh? I was busy. What? What did that savage say now about me? You don't know the contempt I have for these organizations. You have no idea. Okay, I, I kind of tell you the truth. It's not bad doing this for a living, but after a while, it gets to you. Then the, the radio goes off. Three o'clock here on the West Coast, six o'clock on the East Coast. Most normal people turn the radio off. They don't listen to the radio after six. It's, I was told this at the beginning of radio, is that uh, no one listens to the radio after six o'clock. Normal people go home. They have dinner. So the crackpots listen to radio after six. The day part ends at six o'clock. Everyone knows that. 
And then I have to face the whole weekend now of, of all of these stories repercolating in me. I'm having nightmares from them. If I ever told you the nightmare I had last night, you'd feel bad for me. But I'm not looking for your sympathy. I'm just listen, looking for your listenership. So I'll leave that one go. The, the nightmares are getting bad about what Obama's doing to America. I look forward because some, someone called me yesterday and they said, Mike, give us a, a picture of what the world's going to look like in 100 years. Remember that call? And I answered it off the cuff. I didn't th prepare it. I didn't you know, write it out. So I started to present, project. And all I said that I thought was reasonably uh, salient to the, to the issue was the greatest threat to the survival of humanity right now is not global warming, but global Islamism. I thought that that's our number one priority is national security. And we need a president who will take on ISIS and not, take them off the planet, eliminate them, snuff them out, wipe them out. You know that they're as strong as they were a year ago, despite the billions that this phony government has allegedly spent fighting them. They're just as strong as they were a year ago. <clears throat> that's the latest report. Just as strong. So we're losing the war against ISIS because Obama's not fighting the war against ISIS because Obama. You. I, he's the smartest, well, no, I was saying, he's the cl most clever demagogue in the history of America. He spews hatred, works for the enemy, and makes it, fe makes it sound like he's spewing love and working for America. This guy's a genius. You, we can all learn from him. Anyone in the media should take Obama lessons. There should be lessons on how to make believe you're blowing bubbles when you're actually spewing hatred, and how you're actually working for the enemy and make believe you're working for America. This is a lesson. This is a real lesson. It's a new one. KKOB Radio. Brian, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I just wanted to say thank you for honoring my friend and uh, former brother in blue, Scott Lunger. Really appreciate that, sir. I just did it for one reason, Brian. I could not believe that the local paper blacked out the funeral. I was shocked. The Oracle Stadium was filled. People were hanging over overpasses <clears throat> as, the, as, the, as the casket went by. And, and to, to, to do this to the police in the Bay Area is awesome, that the newspapers get away with it. Boxer wasn't there. Feinstein wasn't there. Jerry Brown wasn't there. Pelosi wasn't there. Am I mistaken? Were they there? Maybe I'm mistaken. Well, while I was there, I, they had said that Jerry Brown was there, but I did not see him. Well, okay. <clears throat> to his credit, if he was there, good for him. But it doesn't take away the fact that an, um, a gang member killed him in cold blood. Sir, absolutely. And, and I, I have a theory on this just as an outsider. Officer um, Lunger was the head of the anti-gang task force, was he not? He was at one time, yes. At one time. I think he was targeted. If I were investigating this murder by Mr. Estrada, who shot him in the head at a mere traffic stop, I would, I would say, wait a minute, maybe they set him up. Go out there, middle of the night, weave around, he's on duty. He'll come up, shoot him in the head. You'll go right to the head of the class in prison. You know the law enforcement business better than I do. Is that not a plausible theory? It's plausible, yes, sir. Okay. It's a very amazing, amazing world we're living in right now, that the media is actually on the side of the murderers. Can you believe how far we've fallen? Okay, thank you for, not, uh, for noticing that one, for hearing me. I have law enforcement in my family. It's very personal to me. Did you hear what I just said? I'm not going to say where, why, how, when. You'll never know. Never. But it's a very personal issue to me. As opposed to those who salute the police at the end of every show. I salute the police and the firemen and the mailmen, anyone who has a union. I salute ushers and theaters and the, I mean, whatever. I salute Captain Kangaroo and the founding fathers. Oh, God, cynical. The world is so cynical. All right, look, there's no justice in the world. No justice and there's no peace. Just know that. There'll never be justice and there'll never be peace. Never. You can keep looking for it all you want. You're never going to find it. It's each man for himself. You don't know that. It is. It is. It's that way. It is. I'm sorry I'm slowing down. I just, this is death has got to me. The daughter's crying. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, a very heroic white police sergeant was shot in the head by a Mr. Estrada on a traffic stop. And there was a funeral yesterday in the Bay Area in Oracle Stadium. It was filled to capacity and the local media didn't cover it. I was outraged by it. I want you to play one of the daughters again, the short version, so you'll hear what this means to a girl who was left behind because her heroic father was killed by a piece of vermin. 
a piece of vermin who should be given the death sentence. Listen to this. You were my best friend, and no little girl should ever have to say goodbye to her heroic best friend. Well, laugh at it if you want, all you communist, all you little filthy communists, you, you socialist cowards, you. You sit there in your pajamas in your houses, and you write your little hate columns and your little blogs. You have no idea the damage you're doing. You have no idea the damage you're doing. You know what you call a Republican, don't you? A liberal who's been raped. Uh, you know what you call a Republican, don't you? A liberal with two children. You know what you call a... Uh, you get how it goes. I heard these things. I don't know if I agree with them. It's a bad time in America, and it's going to get a lot worse. You better get ready for... You better buckle your seatbelts. The damage that this monster has done to this country and the world thus far is almost irreversible. And what the monster, and I'm convinced he's insane. I'm convinced of it. I don't care what anyone will show. You've got to show me evidence to the contrary that he's not a madman. We have a madman in the White House. He looks at he sounds at he acts it. Everything he does is madness. But he gets away with it because he's so smooth at his act. That's how good he is. But take a look at the devastation he has wrought. He's like the grim reaper to our nation. And if you think I'm alone in this, you're on the outside of reality, not me. Now, i got to take a break. Then I'm going to come back and take some calls. And then I have another big hour. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. Welcome back, and uh, we're going to read the headlines to you in a few seconds. But I've got to take a couple of quick calls. Incidentally, Donald Trump is in Scotland, visiting his golf course in Scotland. That should be ripe for a Charles Krauthammer tonight on Fox News as he gins up his meanness. Maybe he can say something nasty about him out of jealousy. Iowa poll, Trump takes huge lead over Walker, two to one. Trump says Mexico will pay for border wall. Rand Paul blast media for Trump's surge in polls. Jealous. Jealous, Rand Paul. No, no, no. You're looking. Forget about it, Rand. You're in the one percenter. John, WBAP in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Savage Nation. John, what's on your mind? It's a pleasure to talk to you. I, uh, John, are you there? Going once. Sir. Going twice. Hello? Because John is not there. Thank you for that waste of time. Ray on WABC in New York. Go ahead, Ray. You're on the Savage Nation. Are you there? Yes, I am here. I was just wondering, in the society that we live in, like I said, I'm a conservative myself, uh, I would like to know your thoughts on if, by some reason, uh, if the president uh, was white, if Obama was white. I mean, you can't talk about things that would happen in our history, um, you know, uh, a couple of presidents. As president. well, well, what are you asking? If, if he identified with his white side, is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is that... His mother was a, was a Caucasian woman. We've all conveniently forgotten that. I mean, I don't know what the question means. He only identifies, he said, with the minority side because it got him where he is. Read his own biography. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is a full moon. Any of you look out the... You ever look out of a window? I don't know. Does anyone even look out of their app? If I say there's a full moon, some schmuck has to look on his cell phone to see if it's a full moon tonight. He doesn't even look at the sky. He'll look on an app called Moon App or, or Stargazer and say, yeah, look at that. There's a full moon tonight. They don't look out the window. There's a, they created a special lane for web uh, iPhone users in Belgium because they're crashing into people. You know, they waddle down the street with an iPhone in their hand. They created a lane for web uh, phone users in, in uh, Belgium. Can you believe this? 
What a world we live in. No wonder they get away with this. So I'm looking at one campaign, Chris Christie. I'm going to give you an example of how politics work. Christie's got no chance, zero. Uh, he, he is the Led Zeppelin of the race. As I said, Hillary's uh, the Hindenburg of the race. The spark already went off inside the, uh, the, the Zeppelin, but no one knows yet. They're still dining up there in the car at 30,000 feet, but the spark already is, is, is raging through the, hel the, the helium. Hydrogen, rather. No, they use helium now, right? Then they used hydrogen, terrible thing. So Chris Christie is still raising money. Bush raised $100 million. You hear this? Now, it's because he's such a sterling individual that he raised $100 million. You know, that he loves America so much. $100 million in the first half of the year. And one of the biggest checks came to Bush from a donor whose identity is a mystery. An LLC named Jasper Reserves formed two years ago. No one knows who it is, right? So you go down the list and you see how you buy a candidate and what for. What are they buying candidates for? Why? So Chris Christie raises 11 million from a handful of donors and one of them, single largest check for Chris Christie, the Led Zeppelin, came from Winner Cub Gamble, a Nevada-based corporation controlled by Paul Fireman. Mr. Fireman is a former executive of Reebok, who now runs a Boston-based venture capital firm. So why is he giving that much money to Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey? Simple, because he's proposed building a $4 billion casino in New Jersey, which would require state approval. That's all. And then a single family, the billionaire investor Steve Cohen and his wife Alexandra, Contributed more in total, writing checks worth 2.5 mil to America Leads a Super PAC for Bush. Rex Sinkerfield, a wealthy retired investor, gave $250,000. Anyway, you, you get the picture. Everybody wants something. And Amer in America, you could buy the best politicians imaginable. You get a lot for your money here because they deliver. In other countries, they don't get what they pay for. Here they do because they don't get, they don't get a chance to serve out their term. So let's begin with some of the sound bites. Again, I, I don't know Krauthammer from a hole in the wall. I don't like him because he attacked me once out of jealousy, raging jealousy. So I never forget an enemy, never, never. You ask anyone who knows me. I am the best friend in the world to have, and I'm a relentless enemy. I will never forget people who attack me, never. If it takes me three years in a court of law, I'll win. I went to bat with someone who said he never loses. He lost. I'm free. He's not. He's hiding. He's out of the country. Hasn't paid me a nickel yet, but okay, it's early in the game. No one ever beat him before. I'm not saying I'm such a big shot. I'm just telling you the way I am. Trump is the same way, by the way, which is why he's going to run to the end. I figured it out today. I figured out why Trump... If, let's, let's run that backwards for a minute. Let's assume Trump got in it just by uh, on a lark. He figured, all right, let's just try it. They'll run it. One thing leads to another and starts to spin out of control. Then all of a sudden, the haters come out of the woodwork. Crowd hammer. Glenn Beck, the Margot uh, of our time, and all the others I mentioned, Rove, Jeb Bush, Perry, all of them. So now Trump starts to get mad. Remember, he didn't get where he is by being a nice guy. Nice guys don't finish last. They don't finish at all. So Trump didn't get where he is by being a nice guy. He's a tough fighter and he's a competitor. So I'm figuring out, you know what he's saying? The more they hate me, now I want to win. Now I want to be president. I want to get even. Wait until I'm president. I'll get even with them. I'm imagining that's what he's thinking. I don't think that's the only reason. But let me tell you something. Men like him never forget their enemies. Ever. Ever. And they're quaking in their boots now. So Krauthammer, the jealous, sour man on Fox News, called him a rodeo clown. Or play the rodeo clown piece just for the listeners who didn't hear it. Go ahead. And the pity is this. This is the strongest field of Republican candidates in 35 years. You could pick a dozen of them at random and have the strongest cabinet America's had in our lifetime. And instead, all our time is spent discussing this rodeo clown. Jealous, jealous, jealous. And he's always been a, a lifetime Democrat liberal, which is why he fits right in there at the, uh, at the circus, the, the, the Fox News circus. The only one I like on Fox News, let me clear the air. I have nothing against them. I, I really like Brett Baer. Don't know him. He's never done anything for or against me. The only reason is because he's a real journalist. I've seen pieces he's done on the illegal immigration stuff. I respect him for that. He's done a lot of really good journalism. I, I can't say the same for the rest there. I mean, I watch it when I watch it. I don't watch the news. 
I deliver the news. It's one of the sites I go on. I don't really watch it. I don't have time for it. It's like radio. Do you think I listen to other shows? I do not. I can't. I don't have the time for it. They listen to me, which is why they copy me. The more I listen, the more I hear it's my show now, wherever I listen. He, I must say, even him in the morning, I don't know how he's doing this. You know, I have sympathy for him because of the hearing thing. How does he actually hear my my innuendos? And Because he's getting it. I don't get that. It's starting to sound like me. How, he's copying the shtick I do, the nostalgia. If you start hearing Rock and Roll Friday, you know. Uh, so they did a... Um, a medical report on Hillary Clinton. You know it's a fraud. She got some quack doctor from Chappaqua. <laughs> you hear, they released a medical report on Hillary Clinton where rumors have been circulating for years. And who, whose medical report did they release? Dr. Lisa Bardak, a physician in Mount Kisco, New York. You hear that? This is not really not a scientist or a head of the Nothing. <laughs> Lisa Bardak, a physician in Mount Kisco, New York, releases a medical report on Hillary Clinton. We found out she's in great health. Great health. No height, no weight released. A concussion, transverse sinus venous thrombosis, anticoagulation therapy, specialized lenses to address double vision. And then she got better and the complete resolution of concussion. Clot in the 1990s, anticoagulation. She takes uh, anti-thyroid for her thyroid disorder, as well as antihistamines for seasonal pollen allergies, vitamin B12 and Coumadin. And she, listen to this. Here's what she eats. She eats a diet rich in lean protein, vegetables, and fruits, the doctor wrote. She exercises regularly. I'm sorry, I can't get that one out. Wait, she ex <laughs> Hillary Clinton exercises regularly, including yoga, swimming, walking. When does she do this? She exercises regularly, including yoga, swimming, walking, and weight training. Excuse me? I, I don't. I don't want to say something that women will get mad at me. It's a hard thing after the age of 50. And it happens to, you know, but the thing is, come on. When does she exercise regularly? In between what? In between campaigning and? The letter does not state Mrs. Clinton's height or weight. Quote, Mrs. Clinton is a healthy female <laughs> with hypothyroidism and seasonal allergies on long-term anticoagulation. She participates in the health in a healthy lifestyle and has had a full medical evaluation which reveals no evidence or additional medical issues or cardiovascular disease, close quote. Then the doctor concludes, Dr. Lisa Bardak, she is in excellent physical condition and fit to serve as president of the United States. The doctor wrote, you hear the doctor. <laughs> okay, I hope she is. I mean, I wish Mrs. Clinton the best in any other field but the presidency. We've had Clinton for eight years. We had both of them for eight years. They ran the country for eight years. Why do we need them again? John on WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your comment? Yeah, I'd like to uh, say that Mr. Trump should wear that clown hat because that is the most important job in the arena. He, they are like first responders. And So you're, you're saying be, being called a rodeo clown by a kraut, uh, sauerkraut hammer is a compliment in a way. It should be. They are the most important person there. They are there to save lives. And this it's interesting. To be saved. Well, I would say that Crowdham has never been to a rodeo. I mean, if you work in a circus, you don't have time to go to a rodeo. So I would say that he's never been to one. But uh, you make a good point. Like when the bull gets the, out of control, the clown comes in. That's an interesting. We could do the analogy. I can't run with it right now. I got a slight migraine on the right side from eating a dolmas. I'm on my new diet, so I'm eating garbage. You know, it's terrible. I, I got to go into the diet now. I'm on this new diet. It's killing me. I'm trying to eat light, you know, no bread. And I have all these snack items. They're giving me a mig migraine. I need yang food. If you know the old yin-yang thing, I'm like an ancient Chinese type. If you look at the statues of, uh, did you ever look at the statues of the, uh, oh, I go into it, it's artwork. Have you ever looked at carvings or statues or paintings? of samurai warriors that were done 100, 200 years ago. They all had a big stomach. Did you notice that? They were heavy set. They had la large frames, or they were they were portulent. The ones where they carry the sword. Why? Why would they not be thin and, and lithe with abs showing? Because if they got sword thrusted, it's better to have a little blubber on your body. You don't understand that. So I wanted to knock the blubber off because I put on too much weight from the stress I'm under. So I went on this stupid diet I invented. 
and I've lost exactly six ounces in a week, I think. <laughs> That's without eating any of the foods that I like. It isn't worth it. I'm telling you, just not worth it. I don't even feel any better. In fact, I'm suffering a migraine as a result of eating dolmas. I should have just had what I normally eat for lunch. I'm missing the Indian buffet. I don't go to Chinese food anymore. No bagels in the morning, nothing. It's horrible. So I, I went in the uh, radio refrigerator just now. I brought a snack to the studio. No, horrible. Five dolmas. I mean, God, that's a Greek dish to me. What is a dolmas? Who invented it? The poor people of Greece ate it. It was leftover grape leaves rolled up with rice. Who would have eaten a thing like that? A rich Greek ate a lamb, a lamb stew, a lamb shank. You didn't eat a dolmas. Dolma, you know, a lot of the foods that we think are ethnic foods are are basically peasant foods that were not good for you at all. Like, I know Italians who drink grappa. Oh, I drink grappa, grappa, grappa. What was grappa? The dregs of the wine barrel. And yet it's an acquired taste. That's the thing about certain foods and drinks. I'm saying if you like grappa, good for you, but it's toxic. <laughs> you feel the fumes coming off that stuff? Or anisette. Where was anisette? Who brewed anisette? Who would drink anisette? Again, poor people. They went in the fields where anise grew as a weed, and they made a drink out of it because they couldn't afford a legitimate uh, distilled product. They couldn't buy Canadian Club or whatever, 7-7 seven and seven in those days in England, in Italy. There was no 7-7 seven and seven in the... <laughs> I just want to have a good time in this hour. I'm so tired of the news. Is there anyone out there who wants to have a good time? A Trump schmump? He's in Scotland looking at his golf course. He has his own 757, right? I mean, he has his own plane that says Trump on it. That's pretty cool. So he's not looking to get the plane out of the deal. Can you imagine Bernie Sanders in, in Air Force One walking up the steps and trying to salute the Marines after hating the military his whole life? They're going to have to train him. I can just imagine the training session. I'm going to do an imaginary session of, okay, God forbid there's a fluke. And Bernie Sanders wins. It'll be like the gardener with uh, Peter Sellers becomes president by accident. All of a sudden, Bernie Sanders is thrust into the presidency. And the man has to learn how to salute. He'd probably poke his eye out in the training session. How could that man learn to salute? He was never even a Cub Scout. All right, try it again, Mr. Sanders. Take your right hand, huh? Take the right hand and snap it to your eye. Oh! And he hit himself in the eye. No, no, they have to put like a, a glove on his hand to prevent him from poking his eye out. Try it again. All right, try Run it again. You got the cameras rolling. All right, take 25. Bernie Sanders saluting the Marines as he boards Air Force One. All right, go, mister. Oh, he knocks himself in the ear. All right, let's cut the salute out. We're going to pass an executive order. Presidents don't have to salute Marines on the way into Air Force One or Marine One. All right, next. Now, could you imagine tra training him how to walk up the steps to Air Force One? Impossible to believe that a New York street socialist, he cannot learn how to walk up those steps. Impossible. I have to change it to an escalator. That he's used to from Bloomingdale's. Back in a minute. <laughs> Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. That's a long time. Did anyone catch that? That if Bernie Sanders, God forbid, became president, he would never be able to learn how to walk up the steps and look dignified. It would be that, like the guy from Massachusetts uh, whose campaign was destroyed when he popped his head out of a tank and he looked like a, ch a chipmunk. Remember, that was the end of his campaign. Dukakis, remember? They gave him a helmet, he popped out of a tank, they laughed him out <laughs> off the stage. You know, we're waiting to see Bernie Sanders. I mean, this guy, imagine him being the leader of the free world. Oh, God. Imagine in charge of the biggest military in the world, Bernie Sanders. Attention! Okay, but then the, the thing I said is he would never learn how to walk up the uh, steps to Air Force One with any dignity. They'd have to change it to an escalator. That is used to from Bloomingdale's. It's a funny line. Let's see who steals it first. WDRC, Ben, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Hi, What's with the uh, Samurai. They're, uh, they're waiting. Come on, Ben, we're on it. Ben, stop. You're on a national show. You've got to say what you're saying. Say it fast, please. Samurai were uh, overweight because they felt the energy that they used in their fighting styles came from their center, their chi. So they were paunchy, as you put it. Right, but my point is similar to yours, is that they were not thin with the washboard abdomen. They, uh, 
All right, thanks for the call. I don't understand. People call a show, I guess they think that they know me, and they're making a personal call to a friend, and I'm going to put up with the fact that they're either drunk or on, on pills. I'm not another talk show host. Hello, hello, I really like them, Republican. You're a great American. I got to tell you, you really are, and I like your Robert Hall suit. Come on. Okay, Baltimore. Remember what happened there? Freddie Gray, the great American, died in a, in a police van. All right, city burned. Pharmacies were looted. Killings soared to a level unseen in 43 years because they made the police stand down. Because that moron who's running the city attacked the police. 45 homicides in July in Baltimore. More bloodshed in that single month than it has in 43 years. So they've nullified the police in Baltimore. And the gangs are running wild in the streets killing each other. And everyone else they get their hands on. Unabated. Murder. Because they killed the police. The mayor has destroyed the police because Holder... Obama and the other haters went in there and blamed the police for Freddie Gray's death. Now, of course, they said nothing when the young woman was killed in San Francisco by an illegal alien from Mexico. Or now that the Crow Indians were killed on a reservation, suddenly they're dummied up. Not a word. Get it? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Some come here to work. Some come here to kill. Some can need to work the system, but this country has been invaded. It's been invaded, we've had an invasion, and there's only one man who I think, and I say I think because I don't know, might, just might stop the invasion by building a wall between this country and the third world hellhole called Mexico. You see, if Mexico was such a great nation as we hear, we wouldn't be getting so many citizens of Mexico running here. If El Salvador was such a great paradise, we wouldn't have one-fifth of all the citizens of El Salvador living in the United States of America. No, they come here for a better life. Unfortunately, we're also getting some of the real rotten apples along the way because Obama has stripped the Border Patrol of all authority. The devil in the White House has stripped the Border Patrol of all authority. The devil in the White House has issued 600,000 green cards this year alone without any vetting of who they're giving, being given to, simply to advance the community organizer's desire to destroy the Republican Party. And now let's move on to the Republican Party per se. Rubio says the U.S. has a long and painful history of discrimination and still affects minorities. That's right, you heard it. That's not Bernie Sanders. That's not the usual leftist demagogues like Hillary Clinton. It's Marco Rubio pulling out the race card. Now that he's fallen to where he belongs, which is in the one percenters, and I don't mean the one percent of earners because this guy couldn't make a living if he tried. No, he's fallen to the one percenters in the race for the presidency because that's all he ever was, a zero, who was chosen by the uh, power brokers in the Republican Party because he had an avowal for a last name and he had an Hispanic background. That's how low it's gotten. And yet he said we have a history of racial discrimination. I guess he's felt uh, discriminated against this non-entity. Look, the country has a history with race. It's painful, complicated, and I think its impacts are still felt in many communities across the country. And I think that it's important for us to confront these issues because we can't fulfill our promise as a nation if you have a significant percentage of the population feeling as if the American dream is, not, is out of reach for them. So now Rubio shows his true liberal colors. He says that the U.S. has a painful history of discrimination affecting minorities. Now, why did his family come here from Cuba? How does a non-entity like him become a senator if we have discrimination? How does a complete flop like Rubio run for the presidency if there's discrimination? Doesn't make sense to me. But nothing makes sense that liberals uh, say. Now, some of you think it's futile. Some of you think it doesn't matter. Some of you have given up. Some of you said it's too late. Some of you said the country is over. Some of you said that Obama is so devious and so evil. The Democrats are so entrenched, and the Republicans are not much better that there's no hope. I can't answer that. I'm not God. I don't know what the future uh, you know, holds. I have very dark feelings about what the future holds for this country. And then I have a slight glimmer of hope every once in a while. Now, the perfect campaign for 2016... The ultimate campaign for America 
would be Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. At long last, there would be a shootout between socialism and capitalism. Nobody in the media has said that yet. That's because I lead the pack in ideas. You know that and I know that. I don't need the rewards and the awards. I don't need them. I just said something that you'll never forget. I want a shootout between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. When I say shootout, of course, I mean a debate and an election. Because as I stand here, I know for a fact that it would be a 70-30 win for Trump, maybe 75-25, maybe 80-20. You see, the socialist liberal bloc in America is minuscule. It is minuscule, and yet they have very loud voices. They run the media. They run the universities. And so you think that there are more of them than there really are. There are not that many sickos who hate America. There are not that many crazy leftists who have any power. Never forget that. And although Hillary talks about the millionaires and billionaires and she's going to raise taxes, have you forgotten already Clinton cash? You forgot the book about the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that were grifted by the library by that sterling example of an American citizen? No, the American people are not that stupid to elect a socialist, especially a thin one like Bernie Sanders is no better than the agitators of the 1930s in New York City who stood on soapboxes in parks in the city and bellowed about the wonders of Joseph Stalin. It would be 80-20 because even illegal aliens would vote for Trump. They don't want to throw their money into the dark hole of government. I want to talk about who makes billions off the illegal aliens. I follow the money. I'm the only one who's done this. I've done the job of 60 minutes. 60 minutes won't do what I'm doing for you. I am doing something for you that nobody in the media has ever done. I followed the money. I will tell you, I will disclose for you who makes billions off the illegal aliens. Now you're going to say, how did you do this, Michael? You're a one-man operation. Where'd this come from? Well, guess what? It's all in my forthcoming book, Government Zero. Now, I know I should not disclose this now and let others pick it up and put it into their books or on their shows, but I feel that the subject of illegal aliens is so great. I feel America is being stolen from us so rapidly that you have to understand why it's happening, and then maybe something will be done to stop it. I feel that the media must tell us about the swamping of America by illegal aliens and who's behind this, meaning why is it happening? You think it's about compassion? Do you really believe that progressives love Ethiopians? Do you really believe that progressives can't wait to embrace a Somali and take her home for uh, some tea? Do you actually believe they can't wait to welcome a Syrian into their apartment in New York City? Are you crazy? No, that's not the reason. But I followed the money. Who makes billions off the illegal aliens? Unfortunately, Government Zero will not be out until October, but you can probably find it on Amazon. Let me begin. I followed the money. And I'm going to read it to you from my forthcoming book. I found out who's behind this immigration crisis. There was an article all over the media a few months ago about the luxury hotels being rehabbed for the illegal alien children. Obama to pay illegals and offer all-you-can-eat meals, free cable TV, lawyers, medical and dental, close quote, on a 29-acre complex that ICE probably showed off to the media uh, that week. It was a renovated detention center for illegal alien families in Carnes City, Texas. And so criminals in the hedge fund business saw an opportunity. And the sharks, the anti-American vermin on Wall Street moved in. And they converted a detention center into a money-making center, a profit-making center. Where's the money coming from? Who are the contractors? Who are the contractors that are making and are going to make billions of dollars off the illegal alien amnesty surge that Obama is causing, in this case, the children from Central America? Somebody's making money off this, I said, because we found the RFP that was put out for housing and clothing and feeding these children. I actually found the RFP, the Request for Proposals. That's how the government issues contracts. They put out an RFP, and allegedly there is a bidding contest. And the government had been pl plotting to bring in all of these children for at least a year. I figured someone was making a fortune on it, but I didn't know who. So I wake up and I found out that these children in these detention centers we're going to get flat screen TVs. Are you listening to me? If you're a poor American, do you have a beauty parlor at your disposal for free? Do you have a flat screen TV? Do you have free lawyers, free doctors, free dentists? Do you have a workout gym in your poor community? Do you have a swimming pool in your community? 
Do you have a soccer field in your housing complex? Well, Obama gave them all of these things, all of these things. So I said, wait a minute, somebody's making a fortune off of this. A $50 million federal government contract to house illegal aliens at another facility that was blocked, blocked to the press, and yet they're moving them in there? Many of the rooms are suites from a former hotel. You heard me. Private toilets for the illegals, private showers, flat screen TVs, cable TV, soccer fields. You get the picture, right? Well, guess what? Some people are getting rich off the billion dollar immigration surge, and they're not all Democrats. This is all from Government Zero, which will be out in October. I'm reading it to you. I'm giving it away. Someone's going to steal this book. So I'll be Abby Hoffman for the moment. I'm used to it. Go ahead, make my day, steal it. Only a handful of U.S. corporations have the honor of long-term contracts with federal agencies that deal with the immigration problem. It's a closed shop. And for these companies, the latest surge from Guatemala and El Salvador, that was last summer, has meant big profits, big business. And Obama's pushing for emergency funding for so-called family detention centers like the one in Texas. Resorts, they are, soccer fields with artificial turf, lighting, flat screen TVs, pools, amenities you might get on a vacation once a year if you had the money. So why are you and I spending so much money on those who break our laws? The answer is because of profiteers. Vanguard specialized REIT index fund, Fidelity small cap discovery fund, iShares S&P small cap ETF, Prudential Jenison equity income fund, Eagle Series trust small cap growth fund. I can read the rest of them. You get the picture, right? But I'm not finished yet. I've just gotten started. Who is on the board of directors of GEO Group that is making billions off the illegal aliens that are being given luxury resorts to reside in? And this will explain to you why the Republicans, along with the Democrats, have been lobbying for amnesty in one form or another. But just remember one thing, which I've told you for years, right here on these airwaves on the Savage Nation. Whenever both parties agree on something, you can count on one thing. The American people are being screwed. Who is on the board of directors of, of GEO Group that makes billions off the illegals who are being given luxury resorts to reside in? And this will explain why the Republicans, along with the Deems, have been lobbying for amnesty in one form or another. But are you ready for this? Because here it goes. You didn't expect this, but you heard it first on the Savage Nation. The Koch brothers, David and Charles, who are two of the richest people in the world, are key funders of the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC. Now you know why Michael Savage has never been invited to speak to that group. Now you know why Donald Trump has been excommunicated by the Koch brothers. I explained to you what ALEC is and what they do. ALEC is a lobbying group, and they tell legislators how to vote. The Koch brothers are key funders of ALEC, and so there you have it. You thought it was all liberals who wanted amnesty, but now you find out it's very apparent that so-called conservatives, who are now the guiding forces behind the illegal immigration surge that is now going on in this nation, they're behind it because they own these facilities with thousands of unused beds around the nation and they want you to fill them and pay for them. Big business, big government, and big religion. All one bundle getting paid off your hard labor. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Another illegal alien, Jesus Deniz, also known as Jesus Deniz Mendoza, killed a Good Samaritan family on an Indian reservation that stopped to help him after his car broke down. Stranded motorist killed Good Samaritans for laughing at him. Take a look at the doll. We have a picture of him on uh, the 18-year-old Jesus Deniz on michaelsavage.com. Nice-looking fella. Just the kind of guy you'd stop to try to help. Well, these people were good Christian Indians. They stopped to help him. So he shot Jason. Shane in the, killed him. The wife killed her. And as their daughter, 26-year-old Jura, ran away, he shot her in the back. That's all. Murder warrant for Jesus Deniz. Shot three people with a 22 caliber rifle and then drove away in their car. He shot the victims because he was getting tired of waiting around and because he thought the daughter laughed at him. That's all. Well, it's a cultural thing. I mean, if you feel sensitive to someone's insults, you have to shoot them in the back, kill their parents. You know, pride cometh before all. That's, that's an important story. 
And let's see what else. Rubio attacked America, saying the United States has a long, painful history of discrimination against minorities. That's so absurd coming from him. Now, what did his family flee Cuba for? To have hatred? They came here for discrimination? I mean, in Cuba, they were all like them. All the people were the same type of people. Same racially, basically, more or less. Same language, same culture, for sure. There was no discrimination in Cuba? No, they came here because they came for discrimination. What a schmendrick he always was. But, you know, he was never anything. He was always a zero. Government zero, that's the book. You know, it's Friday. I don't think people want to hear all of this negativity. So I'll give you a little bit more of it. Because that's all there is. The world is horrible. The, the nightmare that this country has become under this monster in the White House has to be told. Somebody has to tell the story. You say, well, why are you doing it? You're not making it any better. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. That's why the fake Republican candidates are flopping on themselves, not knowing what to do, because finally there's a candidate who speaks his mind. At least with him, I get 80, 85 percent of what I want. I don't know his policies on every issue. We have good stuff today. Now, here's a good one. This is a good one, a really good one. Bernie Sanders, as I say, is a, a left-wing fanatic. He got very far espousing communism his whole life. And then he moved to Vermont and pulled the wool over the eyes of all the other New Yorkers who moved to Vermont to chase out the people from Vermont. Because Vermont is not Vermont. I mean, you think maple syrup, you know, Rock Rib Republicans, they were flooded by New Yorkers from the Upper West Side. The commies who ran out 25 years ago because the uh, city, they destroyed the city. They wrecked the city with homelessness and crime. And they ran out of the city to find a more pristine life, life in Vermont. It was mainly college professors who had tenure in New York City uh, who moved to Vermont to, to be there on the weekends in order to get away from the very things that they created in New York City. They're cursing themselves that they gave up their apartments now, but that's irrelevant. So, so Bernie Sanders goes there, becomes a senator. Now, suddenly thinks he's a genius, and he's running for the presidency. And as I say, the best campaign in the world would be the shootout. It would be high noon. Bernie Sanders commie versus Donald Trump capitalist. 85-15 Trump. I'm Jimmy the Greek right now. 85-15 Trump in an actual election. I don't care if they flooded America with Mexico, Trump would, would win 85-15. If Mexico voted, Trump would win. Because the Mexican people like a winner. And they can look at Bernie Sanders and say, are you kidding? I'm going to vote for this communist? I'm trying to get away from them out here in, 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 down here in Mexico. I need another one there. Especially one who sounds like he... Well, let's not go there. It's a family show. But, uh... No, America's not ready for socialism. The last two elections showed you that. Obama's disastrous policies have shown us that. Forget the polls. Forget what the uh, establishment tells you. The country has not moved to the left at all. It's center-right, especially fiscally. Let's forget gays already for 10 seconds. For one minute, put aside your sexual orientation. For one second. Forget sex for two seconds. The country is fiscally conservative. Trump 85, Communist Sanders 15.